Hello everyone and welcome to the Two Having to Roll podcast. My name is Oliver. Today, Robin and I are speaking to our friend Rafe. Rafe's LARP journey started in 2022. He is also a player in the Empire LARP system. This is where we met him at the beginning of the year. We discuss the new player experience in Empire LARP, uh, among a few other things like changing nations. Rafe now calls the Nation of Navarre home. He was in Dawn, something we never give him a hard time about ever. We had a real fun time and we hope you enjoy the conversation. Yeah, the, the grilling's about to start. Uh, so, Rafe, we met you through uh, LARP Empire this year. Uh, how long yes. have you been? How long have you been LARPing for? Uh, oh, I started in February actually, not long ago. Yeah, yeah. I started with a small system, and mm-hmm. then Empire was my second ever LARP. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, we we yeah. were both both Empire newbies together. So, we, like, we we it feels like a million years ago. <laughs> Like that. I, I, first I remember. The t- I remember you helping me put the tent. That was the. Uh, that was the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, poor. Poor Rafe was was standing there trying to put. <laughs> and it's what are those? What are those tents called? Because we have the we have like the bell tent, which You've is got the super tent. Um, easy to put up. Right. It, you just it's a pole. You you put it in. You pitch a tent. It's easy. Uh, but what's what's the type of tent you you were putting up at that stage? So that was a Girl Scout, uh, like an ex Girl Scout scout tent. Mm-hmm. Um, that they they sold to me for like a hundred quid, yeah. Which I thought was yeah. a bargain at the time, but, but. <laughs> as you've now as you've now seen, it's a it's a hassle. Yeah. So yeah, because yeah, I, I don't know the terminology for the for the tent. I'm not camping stuff, but it's one that you have to like hold. You literally have to hold the like the the horizontal beam up yeah. while everything goes in and gets tied down. Yeah, it, it takes it takes like you can do it with two people at a push, but you need three people realistically. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, you come along, and then I was like, "Oh, no, you're pretty good at hammering." He's like, "Yeah, I'm a, I'm a farrier, mate." And I was like, yeah. <laughs> "There oh, we yeah. go." Like, <laughs> I, I don't know how to LARP yet, but I will make friends. One thing, one thing we are, Robin and I are good at is is making sure we're making friends. So we're just like, <laughs> we're "Oh yeah, just... the, well, the tea and coffee that was always that was always going to make you popular." Well, exactly. That's, that's pr- well, yeah. I mean, the coffee was always just a oh, I wanted coffee because that was one thing that I struggled with. The E one was getting up and being like. I'm used to being up at like seven, or at least being yeah. awake at seven. And yeah, the E1, first thing like, I do, we, go on, Robin. Yeah, like, sorry. We, we like we like woke up and we were like, "So where do we get coffee?" And we were wandering around before anything opened, and we're like, "Shit, there's no coffee. What do we do?" Yeah, <laughs> guess we'll make it. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, that'd be a cool little thing to do before time in, you know." And and then it was, and then I was like, "Well, if I got all the stuff, I may as well just make it for a load of other people." I'm amazed you guys are up at seven every day, though. I mean. What were you doing the night before? Because I would always, f- for battle, to wake up and go to battle was the hardest part of the weekend. Because you're, yeah. you're still hungover, trying to put your armor on. I've got to admit, like, if we were in a, it wouldn't be a thing. If we were in a hotel room, I tell you, I, I don't think I could do it. I yeah. don't think I could do it. I think it's the fact you're in that bell tent. So in E1, it was basically cold in the morning. And you were just like, right, we yeah. need to just get it. Also, you need a you need to pee, right? So you're yeah. like, you're like, right, I need, I need to pee, you know, I got, and once you're up, you're kind of, you're up and about. And then like e, E3 and E4, well, not so much E4, but you definitely E2 and E3, those tents and it gets light early at that time of year. And those tents are like little ovens, you know? <laughs> so I, I don't actually have that problem because my no. tent, unlike yours, my tent doesn't seal. No, no. So I, how it, are you finding that in the rain? <laughs> Oh, it was lovely actually because yeah. I got a little tarp that goes underneath. Um, yeah, it, it was quite nice. I I was warm enough. I've I've camped in worse, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, and like I woke up with a bit of a wet blanket once, and I was like, "That's a bit gnarly," but you know, yeah. which, at which the end of the day, that? which event was that? That was that was E4. That was my first time camping in Navarre. Yeah, because um, uh, normally I've got four people in there, like uh-huh. me and my mates. But I just I made the executive decision. I'm like, no, just me this time. Yeah. And thank God for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have you in space, right? Especially it is. Like yeah. Um, I've got all the decorations in there, but there was a little bit of water coming in, and I was like, okay. This yeah. is, this is not, to be fair, like E4 is... was like the first proper rain, though, wasn't it? Like we had all year. Uh, this is like four of us speaking as like Empire newbies. That was like the first time it had like properly rained. 
And yeah. I was so glad that we invested in our setup. I was like, well, this is this is testing it out because it was heavy. Yeah, it was it... like the heavens opened. We were lucky though, because um, I don't know if it was the same for, for you, Wraith, but when it came to putting the tents away, about an hour or so before um before time out, it was very hot and sunny and I think everything dried. Yeah. Yeah, oh I yeah. It was exactly right because I, I actually thought that the other day. I was thinking, oh my God, I never took my tent out after E4. Is that, that's going to be moldy now that I remember? Oh no, we did have No, it was sunshine. fine because that's what fine. I was worried about because we had got away with like E1, E2, E3 with it being completely bone dry, you know? And then the, the and rain then the was raining opened, yeah. on the way. It was like raining on the way to E4. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be the event that we're going to have to put it away wet and then we're going to have to come home and then try and figure out a place to hang it up to dry, you know, for next year. Um, but luckily that hasn't been the case and we haven't had a bad, even then it was like when it rained, it was raining in time out. So yeah, didn't, yeah. Didn't um, it was quite funny though. I remember, do you remember when it's properly started chucking it down? Yeah. Uh, it was about yeah. uh, an hour and a half before time. Then I think mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Um, so I was in league just going to see a friend of mine had to skip across the entire field to get back to Navarre. Yeah. And I go into my tent to go and get some shelter and I see in there four of my mates who weren't like they're, they're not navari they were all in dawn they've clearly been caught short i thought ah we'll just go to rafe's tent do we need to ask him no we'll just sit in there so they're helping themselves to my bloody biscuits and i'm like you i mean i understand it and i do absolutely the same thing but you bastards I was say, i'm just about to say I've, i'm pretty sure you would you would probably do the same thing what's the what the, the, tr the trees over in the var camp do they give you much cover because oh so much oh yeah. really okay yeah, yeah that's good. um I, I I honestly don't understand why you guys are still in dawn. Um, oh, oh. The bar is so much oh, better. How long oh. do you have, right? How, <laughs> how, how long do you have? So so we'll re rewind a bit. Like so, you jumped in. Was was that was this because of the long dark, or was it literally this year? Or not long dark? I'm calling I'm calling it long dark. Was that because of COVID, or was it literally just because this year you were like, oh, I'm going to give this a try, or was it something that you had looked at LARPing? beforehand and went oh i'm gonna gear up to do it in 2022 uh not really actually uh, i never had any plans to do laughing because the only experience i've had of laughing before i started was the film role models <laughs> this, um, yeah you ever you ever seen <laughs> yeah. that yeah i haven't i haven't uh, seen it but i've seen the larp clips unfortunately yeah <laughs> yeah and it's like it doesn't give it a good rep it, it makes it look cringy it makes it look silly mm -hmm. and i was like okay let's never do that I mean, That's just no. me off, actually. Yeah, I, I, and then, I get it. Uh, I started playing D&D &D probably two years ago now. Yeah. And I like to consider that the weed. This is like the heroin. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you've got the gateway and then you're like, <laughs> okay, I want to see what it would be like if we were just all doing it massive in a field, real life, no dice. Yeah. And I've been hooked ever since. What yeah. can I say? So, it's what, yeah, for like better or worse, was it, was it what you expected? I feel like I know no. the answer. No. Uh, absolutely not it was so much better yeah in uh, and and in ways i didn't even expect because you think larp you think like the most nerdy of nerd and, and that's not a bad thing but you know like it's an acquired taste yeah. it, you know, <laughs> certain people go to these kind of events and i get there and there's military personnel there's people like yourselves you know sort of everyday people with jobs from all over yeah, you're I, trying I, I to mean, say normal you're trying not to say normal people aren't you <laughs> no, no but i mean people from all sorts oh yeah, no, like, yeah you know you farriers mean. um yes. you guys have done modeling yeah um i met people who were you know currently serving in the armed forces who go people yeah. who come from abroad and that stereotypical nerd wasn't really there or not in the way I've seen. Yeah, I yeah, I, um, I'm going to be careful speaking about this, but I, hopefully people will, yeah, will 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 take it uh, in the most generous way possible. But yeah, we 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 came from like obviously we D and D, but we mainly came through like via cosplay and then through D and D yeah. and then into this. So we kind of had this like, oh, it's kind of like it must be like cos cosplay and D and D and when you when we were going around the convention scenes yeah there, there is a there is a certain type of uh yeah uh person that yeah. will show up at a convention um yeah. and they're not people this is what i'm saying yeah right it's... and and i played you know uh tabletop games as well and card game like magic the gathering where you get a certain type of yeah you get a certain type of person and 
you know, I expected mm. maybe more of that attitude. Hopefully people are reading between the lines here, but I'm, I was expecting a little yeah, bit it's, more of it's, that, you know? Well, I mean, I think the word I would use is the diversity because yes. I was expecting yeah. um, yes. much yes. like I have, you know, with table topping and all that kind of stuff, a certain type of crowd. And that's not necessarily a bad crowd. It's just a type of crowd. Yeah. Whereas LARPing is so diverse yeah. in the best possible way, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Oh no, I didn't feel out of place. Like I have been. To... Yeah, you didn't feel out of place. That's no, thing, I, exactly. Yeah. And like you said, because it's so it's it's so diverse. Like I've literally shown up to like Magic the Gathering games in years gone by, and I've just felt like so out of place. I'm like, oh man, I'm the only person over twenty five here, and I'm the only person yeah, that's not a uni, and uh, it, it's just you get this concentric. But with so that, like to hammer this point home, yeah, my brother and my father are both in the armed forces. Um, you know both a lot tougher than i am they they're disciplined they they have a very sort of forward thinking way of being and i was like okay when i start laughing i'm not going to talk about it with them they, they don't want to know about it <laughs> anyway we come to e4 there's my brother earl of his own house and my dad who's his second second in command in dawn and i'm like what yeah uh, what yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's just you know that but, you, but you under, you're you saying what, but you also are like totally understanding, aren't you? Because I know yeah. that if uh, if my parents just came along, that they would love it. But it's it, difficult to explain because it's they don't. It's difficult to make people understand what's actually going on in the LARP field without yeah, making it sound. Yeah, you just want to encourage them to just come and try it. Super <laughs> niche, you know. Would you guys agree that the best way to sum up LARPing is don't knock it till you try it? Because I think oh, that yeah. is like. Definitely. That, like, that makes it a difficult down. hump though doesn't it this is the thing so i think the reason we never got into larp beforehand is because for so many things like you know going going cosplaying or something okay i'm gonna go online and yeah you you see all the cosplay music videos that people put together of them being at the conventions and you've seen photographs you've seen yeah. the youtube videos that's what it's like oh i want to play D D. You can go and watch all these D and D actual play shows and go. Oh, that's what D and D is like. Let's go try that. If you want to try a sport or a, a myriad of different hobbies, you can kind of see what it's like. If you want to join a gym or something, they've got like a. They probably have a video or a Facebook page that makes it very clear. Laughing, you you can't. You have to do it to yeah. get it because even when it's filmed, it's not. It doesn't look it, it, right. It doesn't really show it off, does it? <laughs> No, well, it, it doesn't because you sort of, you see the costumes and I'm talking monsters more so. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, that's, that's some guy in an orc mask. That's not an orc. But you see the entirety of the Druge army charging towards you. And you're like, that's a bunch of orcs over there. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 it, so how did you, um, how did you find that? Because you went to a, another LARP system. Was that a smaller one? That was a considerably smaller one. Still, mm. still quite good. Yeah. Um, but the um, the problem I had with it was they tried to mix a lot of genres, so like mm. steampunk, uh, um, fantasy, all those kind of things. Which is, uh, it's good for some like uh, certain larpers, but mm. for me, I like a certain theme yeah. and like a goal. Yeah. So I come to Empire, and I see that the whole theme is being part of the Empire. And the goal of the game is to fight the Empire's enemies. Yes. Or, well, it is for Ravik, because you've you've met Ravik, he just likes to kill stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so going into that first battle and you're just seeing 40 or 50 people standing beside you and they're like, yeah, we're here to kill those guys over there. You sort of forget where you are. Yeah, it is amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it is, and it's pretty amazing. That's one thing, because we haven't done another system so we don't really have uh, anything to compare it to I i'm hoping next year we'll maybe try either a player event or a, another smaller system just to just to try it out but we were just like because basically going back to what i said earlier there was just a lot more information and we when we start when we started saying oh actually i found this this larp system that interests me and then we started talking to people and then we had one or two mutual friends who were either very interested in it or actually uh actually get like we spoke to jamie on the podcast uh the other day um and he was someone that robin was playing D, D with like way before we even started talking about larp and he's been doing empire since day one uh like e1 year one 
you know? And yeah. then so then we had like a bit of an in to be like, all oh, right, okay. And then we could do have a lot of information. And then we found the like the fake because like who uses Facebook these days? Apparently LARPers do. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, I, all my Facebook's LARP now. Yeah. It's just yeah. all LARP. My my profile picture's LARP. Yep. Yeah. All my Facebook groups, it's like, oh, that's a LARP meme, that's a LARP meme, that's a LARP meme. That is a meme not safe for work. And LARP meme, LARP meme, LARP meme. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so how did how did you how did you like find your way into going from that small LARP? Because I'm assuming was it was it just the interest in uh, so tabletop I mean, that brought you to it, or what was what was what, your to background? The original that, LARP? Yeah. Or, or well, just uh, LARPing in general, actually. Just what? yes, in general. Yeah. Uh, so actually, it's quite interesting. I started modeling LARP gear mm -hmm. before I started LARPing. Oh. So. I got sent a lot of stuff from a local, like, uh, what would you call him? Vendor. And that's yes, not vendor, a word. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, a local vendor. And he said, could you model this for me? Um, I've got a photographer. You know, you've got the nice sword. I've actually just seen your sword in the background. It's exactly the same sword. Um, and they said, you know, could you model it for me? And we'll take a couple of photos just to help promote it. And so I'm there at the, at the shoot. And I'm like, this is kind of cool. So what's this LARPing all about? And then as part of the payment, he said, I could just give you some of the gear. You could go off and try it. And so I did. I went online. I looked up local Devonshire LARPs. I found one, paid 20 quid for a day event. And I was like, all right, got no weapons, just uh, that tab eyed you've seen me in. That's yes. all I had. Yep. And I was like, all right, let's just jump in, give it a go. Mm -hmm. And for 20 minutes, I was like, oh, my God, I'm just some twat standing in a forest in a... <laughs> In like, in a in a tabard. Why am I wearing a tabard? And there's like hikers because it's not like Empire. It's much more. There's like hikers. <laughs> it's like hikers. Okay. And I'm just there like yeah. hi. Yeah. Oh, so God. yeah, that that's so it's good then. Okay. Well, I'll ask you this: Was that uh, was that a an overall positive experience, like a net positive experience? The small lot. Oh my not? God! Yes. Okay. Oh, Twenty yeah. minutes. I felt like this embarrassed. You know what am I doing here? This dweeb almost. <laughs> and then <laughs> I started seeing my, um, my now good friend, Jake Moxie, yeah. really getting, really getting into the fighting. And I was like, sorry, I'm here. I just, you know, just throw myself in, see what it's like. And I ended up having a fantastic day. Yeah. Um, and then me and Jake, uh, you know, Jake, of course, mm -hmm. um, we became very firm friends and he's the one who invited me to join him at empire. Yes, and that's where I was just like sold on luck completely. Yes. It was yeah. You know, Empire is great. Empire it, is great. It, it's those bigger systems. I love yes. you know just being in a world. You you go to Dadford Road campsite. You're not at Dadford Road campsite. You're at Anvil. There's the pub down the corner. Yeah. There's yeah. the place you buy armor. There's the gate where if you want to go fight. That is that is essentially RuneScape real life. I'm yeah. I'm here for it. Yeah, it is. They, they do such a good. Uh, like honestly, the the landowners, the farmers as well, they 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 have such a good system going because when you arrive, also you're right next to Silverstone Racecourse, right? And, yeah. and you can hear sometimes hear uh, people go on the track, and you're like, you, you see it, especially when you drive in, you're like, you see it, and you drive through the out of character camping bit, and you're like, well, that's this isn't very immersive because there's a big racetrack right there, mm -hmm. and then as you're setting up, there's like still cows like in the next field over, and the the tractors are going around constantly, um, and you're like, oh okay, but then time in comes and it all it all just disappears you know not not imagine i mean they literally move yeah. the cattle and they literally stop the tractors it's just for such the time in escapism. do you do you remember that there's a house literally overlooking the entirety of anvil because i forget it's there when time in's called is that what by the, where like the, the showers is like as in the, yeah you know the, the farmhouse yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i forget that's there yeah, can you can you imagine? Can you imagine? I would, I would totally. I mean, if I if I look, cause they, I I don't I, I don't know how how they, they run in the farm. Whatever they 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 seem like real good farmers because I know a lot of uh, you you'll know as well. I know a little bit of your background, Rafe. You know, sometimes farmers will be like, oh yeah, use my land, but then they'll just crack on with their farm work. It's like, oh, farm work's got to be done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that so they've obviously got a really good. I'm I'm assuming I'm assuming they have a really good relationship with they must um, the do, landowners. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if that was I me, mean, I would be Airbnb in that house out to someone, a player at Empire that's got a lot of money. <laughs> that's where the Empress. That's where the Empress will go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe that's why we don't have uh, don't have a, a, an Empress or an Emperor yet because we need to get need to get a better 
Who <laughs> <laughs> need a palace a for them? <laughs> better accommodation. A better accommodation. And there's there's been a few people like when we've been we had like live chats and streams and they're like they're like, Oh yeah, would would you would you two go for the Emperor or Empress? And I don't know about you, Rafe, but having spent like the, the year going to Empire, like it is such a deep game that I'm like, I, I don't want no part in any of that that deep like, yeah think, that would take over my entire life i mean it's funny you say that i because obviously i left dawn mm -hmm. uh two games ago oh sorry more like game and a half ago we'll edit all this out don't worry um <laughs> Keep replacing the word Navarre with Dawn. I stayed in Dawn because it's the best. It's not. It's really not. But sorry. I mean, Bob. as you were saying, like, you know, keeping the game sort of surface level, like, how am I supposed to get in that deep? Mm -hmm. I started a striding with two people, me and my best mate Rob. Mm -hmm. After one game, that striding is now at 20 players, one who is trying to actively be Empress, mm -hmm. a couple who are trying to go for military positions, nice. me, who's in international espionage, espionage now, um, and me. we've got a deal with the most powerful is man that, in the criminal underworld. Is, is that, yeah, is that just, because someone's trying to kill you, or did you want to get into that? <laughs> we didn't want to get into it, nor, did we, nor were we getting killed. We just sort of spoke to the right people at the right time and found ourselves getting more and more involved so yeah, yeah. so that, i was that's, like yeah 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 it's that thing of the game's deep but you find yourself just being plunged into it yeah. if you're yeah you know yeah like for example uh you guys are sort of like the face of dawn at the moment i found oh, uh, you, you sort of are you know like you. Um, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, yeah. No, thanks for saying that. But like, uh, what's great about the? I'm sure every other nation's great. Um, but what what's good about the, the the community that we're with is the fact that yeah, we are like like yourself. We're new players. I mean, next year we probably aren't going to be considered as new players. But like, it'll it, we're, we're still new compared to yeah. people that have been playing since 2014 or whatever it was. You know, so to come in and yeah them be so welcoming and not be like oh yeah who are these who are these two like <laughs> just parading themselves around everywhere again we we just we just we're trying to make friends and we're just trying to make it easier for um other people to to come in and also we just like talking about it so we're just like hey why not record it so <laughs> yeah. and it gives us a chance to talk to people like you outside of outside of laugh as well yeah, and oh god, it's it's a long, long dark, isn't it? Yeah, it, this is our first long dark. Uh, how so? How are you? Are you like? Were you bummed when E four ended, or? Um, I, it felt like the end of something. That's for sure. But um, obviously, the Greywoods, uh, that's my striding, had grown so much. We've mm -hmm. become like a really close knit group of friends. Yeah. Uh, we actually run in uh, in universe D and D. See, in I the empire universe yeah i wanted to I wanted well to uh, so we bad. always want special guests on our for cameos in our little adventure oh yeah we can, we can cameo yeah <laughs> so we will uh, I, I will talk to you talk to you about that after the podcast most, that yeah is... most definitely definitely ding ding that. ding 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 yeah, um yeah i don't so, sorry go on rafe it, it hasn't felt like i've left empire because i've got the group of friends who i met at the game we talk every day uh, we've got some player events lined up, so nice. you know we're going to we're going. I'm going to a ball this Saturday, actually. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah unfortunately, we I'm supposed to be teaching the dancing. Yeah. All right. So yeah. yeah, I think that's what I think that's the one near us. Actually, I think that's just actually down the road from us. It's um, Chippenham. Yeah, it's what it's, yeah, it's forty really, minutes from here. Yeah, it's really close. It's like Bath, um, and it's dawn. Oh, I'm sure, you yeah, make yeah, it's, it. It's dawn centric as well, but. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, because we we yeah we we basically uh went just full ham on joining the hobby this year so like we yeah. are doing a little it's also nice even though uh, when e4 ended i was actually surprised that i wasn't more bummed i thought oh it's gonna be horrible when it ends and it felt like you said it felt like the end of something but it also felt like ah this is a nice little bow on the year and now we can just like go home and de decompress from it a little bit and i've actually quite liked yeah the, and the break if you also return to reality a bit as well yeah um because I, I i found my sort of whole summer was larp just yeah. you know larp after larp after larp if it's not larp it's getting ready for larp have i got the right gear yada 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 yeah. now that i'm out of the season i've managed to focus on other things you know yeah climbing for example and my work 
Yeah. So, so yeah, because you 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 do like stunt <laughs> acting and things like that. Is that is that something that um, attracted you? Do you think that that's what kind of steered you into LARP because it is a more of a physical uh, type of role play if you've already done tabletop? I actually started LARPing before I was in the stunt business. Mm-hmm. Um, but it certainly was a bit of a relief when I told my buddies at work, I was like, yeah, I'm going, I'm going away this weekend. Am I able to not be called in? And they were like, oh, we're all going away too. And I said, all right, there you go. Magaluf, Spain. And they're like, oh, no, no, we're going on an office trip. We're going to Empire. And I was like, no, no, you're not. No, you're not. And then so I... <laughs> Amazing. They are all Imperial Orcs, which I find hilarious. Oh, that's <laughs> great. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. And I, I was like, "Why are you there?" And they're like, "Rafe, we can claim this as adventure training." Yeah, we literally hit each other with swords. This is what we do for life. We can train with this. And I'm like, "Can I? Can I claim it as adventure training?" They were like, "Yeah." So we'll pay for your ticket. <laughs> so, so Godric's not got too much to do. Uh, he, he won. He's got one or two things he wants to do. But one of the things uh, he definitely wants to go do, and uh, I'll see if Ravik wants to go with him is go to the Imperial Orcs and go to the fighting pits. Because I think that's why they're probably very yep. good at been that. Been there, done that. You've been there it and done it. Like a, it hurts like a bitch because they do not pull their blows if you ask them not to. Yes. Um, yes. You can... It's a lot of fun, though. Yeah. All yeah of that. Doing it. Like, the, um, they actually even say to you, do you want to win the fight? Because yeah. I did it with one of my mates who was in the fighting pits as well. We did a full choreographed fight and it looked fantastic. Yeah. And the one of my highlights of E4. Yeah, I will come with you though for sure. Yeah, we'll definitely I want do to see you get tr- your ass beat. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Yeah, I, I definitely. I mean that that would that, that would that uh, honestly. <laughs> Can if, RNL if, come with if, you? <laughs> if someone leaned over to me and said, "Oh, do you want me to let you win the fight?" My ego would just be Oliver's ego would just be like, "Well, ah, never mind, Godric." So. Oh, uh, this was a this was an OC thing because we were like, we're going to be throwing each other around the ring. We yeah. need to clarify now that's what who's i mean winning this yeah, thing? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah oliver's ego would be like yeah like uh what do you mean you want to let me win but yeah no yeah it all in all seriousness yeah i i kind of want to explore that side of the game because obviously there's the grappling side that is has to be um it's, it's not it's not it, yeah. really in the rule it's not really in the rule set so it has to be consensual yeah. between the two players and things like that and it's like self uh well, moderated like, i guess yeah i think we were like saying before i really want to learn how to grapple at larp and then when they were talking about the fighting pits i was like well that's probably a good place to learn how to grapple right yeah. <laughs> and that gives me that's it's why i brought that up because it gave me confidence <laughs> you uh rafe saying that they are if, if a few of them are you know in that business then they must have a sense for it yeah and it's 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 hard at a system like empire for sure because you have got a lot of health and safety to consider and that's understandable but as long as you're with someone who's professional and you you sort of you have the discussion then i don't think that's an issue no yeah it should just be an experience because I, I would want it as a learning experience for godric so and a bonding experience between godric and the the imperial orcs um yeah and hopefully dawn on the imperial orcs so i'm going to try and get a few people together i'm going to see if i can get any like green knight errants that it's part of their test of metal to to go over there as well We'll see if we can get a group over. Oh, uh, definitely. Because, I mean, that's exactly what the Imperial Orcs were saying when they came over to the Glory Square before. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you know, we love it when people come over and they have part of their, their test is to come and fight in the pits. And they seem to be, they're pretty much almost like, come fight with us. We love it as well. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to explore a little bit about your 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 change, because that your change into another nation, um, because that, that can be something that... Uh, new players i think uh would be kind of a little bit cautious of coming into the system and going what what nation am i going to be part of oh i won't know anyone i won't oh you know how am i going to choose and that might put them off like talk us through the process of going right i want to change nation and then what what it's like like do, do you get i'm assuming you get game doing that you know it's not oh, the case the, of being in the game is um the gameplay is fantastic for changing nation because um, I mean, I'm a bit of a red, uh, not a red herring, um, black sheep on this, on this occasion. That's the <laughs> metaphor I'm looking for because I came to the game with very little costume yeah. and a character in mind. Uh, of course I went with my friend yes. who was already in Dawn, very established in Dawn. 
Um, so I just went along with him. And as I got to learn more about the nations just through gameplay, I realized very quickly Dawn wasn't really for me. Mm -hmm. Like my characters, I always play edgy rangers. It's just, just yeah. what I do. Yeah. <laughs> and I realized very quickly that's that's where I want to be as Navar. I'm gonna stay here for a few more games, learn how to play, learn how to, you know, lead a little bit as well. Yeah. And then I'll make the move over. Yeah. Um because you don't have to have a new character to do it right you don't have to no go, no yeah, not at all re -roll. um so ravik then goes over to the egregore of dawn uh sorry the egregore of navarre and says i want to become navari and we spent about half an hour wandering through navarre almost like m lost in thought and it's like one of those arm behind the back walking through the park type of strolls where we're talking philosophy, we're talking about the war, all of this is in character, of course. And yeah. Ravik sort of feeling like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I'm starting to understand why I've been drawn to Navarre. So began the best side quest of my life, where I had to go and find the Egregore of Dawn, get myself unbound so that you, you're free to move nation, and then get sworn into Navarre, which was my highlight of e3 really? because yeah. i had gone on a navari skirmish uh -huh. um the day before and the commander or the guy who was leading the skirmish got killed and everyone was just sort of all over the place and there's ravik with his two swords out like right you stand behind me we're gonna get through this we're gonna go together or we die together uh -huh. so he ends up sort of pseudo leading this this yes. little squadron of people oh, but leading it yeah leading it um and then we came out of the gate, never saw any of them again. And then cut to the present time. I'm there getting sworn in. And they ask for witnesses. And they say, you know, who has seen Ravik fight? Who has who is here to witness his joining of Navar? And these people whose faces I knew, I never knew who they were, were sort of sticking their hands up and being like, Yep, yeah, that's the guy who stopped us dying. That, that he led this little squadron of us. And that's I'm like amazing. <laughs> Oh my God. And that is how I met uh, one of my closest friends who is now part of my striding because she came along and joined us um, at E4, which was, and it's just that kind of stuff bleeds through into the real world because you're just oh, like, yeah. I'm, getting, you, I'm you, never going to forget that. Yeah, you told that. And I was getting chills when you were saying that because it was like, yeah, it's, it's, it was like, yeah, could anyone witness? And you're just like, you've affected other people's games, you know, and you're literally going into a new, a new family, a new nation. Yeah. And you know you have a place yeah. there, you know, and it's all it's all role play, and everyone seems to, even though it's everyone seems to know what to do. That's the amazing thing as well. Everyone seems yeah. to yeah, know. Yeah, and then I came to grab my stuff, like in character, grab my stuff from Dawn and sort of start my journey over to Navarre. And I run into you two, and we had that brief that I mean, I know it was a brief conversation, but yeah. it was that sort of, oh, Ravik, you're leaving. O okay, what? What have <laughs> you was, done? Yeah. <laughs> Because to be to be fair, like our, our games haven't like, it, it, well, basically in every event, uh, we've we've kind of hung out more out of character because um, yeah, you uh, have been yeah. quite close to us. Um, then in character, we've like fought alongside each other a few times out of character, and even then, I think, uh, sorry, in character, and even then, I think we've spent more time <laughs> in the yeah, uh, we, we yeah, we, I remember me and you, Ollie just and Nam. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. fight our way, fight our way. Hey, one of these, one of these orc players said they would let me win. Let's go sort them out. Uh, <laughs> let's go. I see. Mm. But what, oh, what's yeah. what's really well, obviously like maybe Godric's like, oh yeah, you know, okay, Ravik, you know, off you go. Um, but what's really freaking cool is that because you, yeah, you're the same character who was in Dawn. You've gone over to Navarre. You know that gives us and other players in dawn are linked to navarre and vice versa yeah. so if i'm like right i need you know if, if if i ever get put in charge of a skirmish or something and they're like okay we need 30 from dawn we need shock cavalry, we, we need, yeah. yeah we need 20 from navarre i'll be like right i know the person to go talk to oh i can't find them i'll just go get ravik instead <laughs> no, no. wow no 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 wow. I, I would i would go right okay well i'll go i'll go speak to ravik and that gives me an instant <laughs> i know who to speak <laughs> I know, I know. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, unbelievable. Couldn't help it. Wow. No, I would, I would, I would obviously go right. Okay, well, I'm go, I'll go speak to Rabbit because he he knows what he's doing on a on a skirmish, you know. Um, and it's and it that makes it easier if you are put in that position. Then going, oh, I only know people in Dawn, so we'll get like thirty people from Dawn 
and then a load of randoms show up at the Sentinel Gate, and you're like, I guess, I guess you, I guess you can come. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I, li- I like there's having never, those. There's... Go on, sorry, mate. There's never too many people for a skirmish. There's always someone who'll go with you. There, there is, there is, and obviously you want everyone should have a crack at the the whip. That's that's fine, but uh, especially if you want to like be successful and not die. Um, yeah. it's, it's nice. It's nice to at least know uh, the majority of people there, so you can. So they, especially if you're in control, then you know that they will probably listen to you. If like, so if if it's a load of random winter markers, or I'm not picking up winter mark, but I'm just it was just a random one. Like if there's a load of random winter markers coming through with you, and then you shout over to them, they have no idea who you are. They're just like, I'm not listening to that person. But if you come with I me, had... and I'm like Rabbit, Univari, go do stuff in the trees, and you're going to be like. Cool, Godric. And then you'll run off. I had an absolute nightmare with the skirmish. Um, I was not sort of seconding it. Um, I was basically in charge of the physics pool. So mm-hmm. my job was to get... My striding were predominantly physics at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, our job was to keep them safe and get them where the physics needed so to be. So which skirmish was it? Was this what... Uh, this obviously wasn't the one that you had to leave. This is the one, this is one after, is it? Oh, this was at E4, yeah. E4, okay. Um, I can't... I actually never went on the skirmish because we had basically... You know how when you go through the gate, everyone's clicking, they click everyone through? Yeah. So I got clicked through and I was the last person before the cutoff. Yeah. My lead physic, oh, the person man. who's going to be healing everyone, didn't make it through. So I ran back through the gate, got my physic, pushed her through the gate, and I was like, cool, I've just sent my striding off without their leader. Yeah. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> that, that sucks. So for people listening who don't understand this, so like the, the skirmishes are, are smaller, like little adventures that go off through the Sentinel Gate, but because they, they have a set number of players that are allowed to go to, for about for game balancing reasons. So what they do, I mean, what I think what they used to do is just whoever showed up first come first serve type thing just went. Yeah. But now what they do is with a bigger player base is they assign skirmishes to different people in different nations so that someone is actually given the responsibility you don't have to go on it so so like the one we went on last time it was given to the night protector of winter the night protector is non-combatant and they uh, organized it was up to them to organize the skirmish basically and go yeah. okay i'm gonna let this i'm gonna ask this person to lead it you sort it out and then that person goes but they have to yeah like you said uh rafe they have to do a counter to make sure there's not too many people going and what people will sometimes do and it's a bit crap is they will like hang out around the gate and then as they open the gate they like just just run in with the blob you know so and then a load of people who are supposed to really be going and who know the plan don't get to go which kind of sucks you know It, it, it is a shame but as i mean i've spoken to a lot of people about this there's always going to be people like that yeah you know in any any hobby anywhere it's just um you wish it didn't happen but yeah, yeah yeah what yeah what can you do what can you do so what so what um so what so, so what happened to the uh obviously your commander died on that other skirmish um but did you have to lead it like from like did, were you basically just like let's get out of here <laughs> and ran out or did, or was it like early on in the skirmish and you're like crap oh you're talking about this skirmish at e3 right yeah yeah, uh, agree. we were only about halfway through the fight, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, so I sort of rallied everyone together, got us in a bit more of a not really my star, but I got us into a skirmishing wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, sh- I mean, it wasn't a shield wall. There were no shields. It's Navarre. And I said, right, you guys are hanging around in the combat way too long. We need to hit them hard, hit them fast and then get out. So I said, as soon as you see me running back you start running back as well. And we started just eating away at these orcs, mm-hmm. running back to our physics, getting healed up, hitting them again. And then obviously you've got Dawn on the other side, like a load of Dornish commanders, and they were just basically taking the hits like champs. But that's not how Navari fight. And uh, they were trying to fight that way. So I stopped it and it seemed to go very well. So yeah, that that's the um, that's what I love about the specialization of the of the nation though. And it's funny how, like you say, that that's the way you like to fight, and then you've just you've ended up in the nation that fights like that. You know, that's yeah. no, I'm assuming that's no coincidence. Um, but yeah, there are some no. times where you see newer players, and they're just like, oh, I'm just going to follow. Um, like in the monster battle, Robin was uh, telling me about some winter markers that were doing a lot of charging, and they did they didn't know how to follow through a charge. <laughs> they were no, just you, like, like because you're a shield fight. Yeah, they're shield fighters. Yeah, that's um, the thing. Like, do. You- 
I find that sometimes like um obviously we're still very new as well but there's certain nations that I feel go so well together out in a battle and Navarre and Don are two nations that I think work oh. so well together even though they fight it is the strongest things. alliance in the empire <laughs> for a reason <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah well, I mean we we definitely missed you uh oh I threw oh, a you thought I was heartbroken <laughs> We, I was, yeah, we oh my god! I was even even though even though like uh, Meta, you were the ones who were killing us all. But like, yeah, we we missed uh, we missed Navarre badly on on the Sunday. I got well, like, we found ah. out on the Saturday night, and we were actually walking through Navarre, and it was late night. I was very drunk, and we were walking through, and then somebody went, "Oh, have you heard? Um, like like Navarre's not fine tomorrow." And I was like, "What?" And I just remember just being like. No, <laughs> I was doing the spill tantrum. I was like, no, it's not fair. <laughs> I, I, I kind of have to admit it was a blessing in disguise because this was my E4 was the first time my father came to Empire mm -hmm. and he's in Dawn with my brother. Yeah. And so I'm there through the Sentinel Gate with my my commander who I was um, taking orders from in the Entwine Pass. His name was Angus, uh, in-game Damarian. Yes. And I yeah. see across the field... <laughs> My brother, his girlfriend, aka my best mate, my father, and all my other Dornish friends. And I'm like, guys, forget the plan. We're killing those ones over there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely trounced them. Like, we just went through. They didn't respawn. So my dad's first experience of the Battle of Empire... He just gets absolutely pounded by his son, and then told to sit in the corner for the rest. Yeah, of the so I... you're, I'm pretty yeah. sure I saw because I haven't I haven't actually met him, but I'm pretty sure I saw your father in because I was in that respawn point as well because I got taken out of that monster battle like so fast. Oh, so you were fast. Yeah. God, um, I I should have healed you, and I'm sorry, but I thought yeah, you were respawn, so I left you on the ground. What the hell? <laughs> I love I love how the monsters. I don't know why they give them like stay with me or get it together because no one ever uses it as a monster. <laughs> Uh, they should just go, ah, yeah, no. just whatever. Um, but no, I because I, you'd said that your father was coming to LARP, and I, I and I remember like looking over at someone in the spawn, and I was just like, that person looks like looks like Rafe, and it must be <laughs> this must be Rafe's dad. Was he in a white tabard? He he. Well, it was it was it was more that he just yeah. You, uh, you I don't know whether it might might be yeah. offensive. I hope not. But yeah, you have he, he definitely or you have his bearing, and I was like, all right, that must be. <laughs> Oh, it's not offensive at all. He keeps getting told he looks like Willem Dafoe. And if I end up looking like Willem Dafoe, I'm happy. Handsome chap. There we go. Yeah, he did. Green Goblin, why not? Yeah. So no, it's 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 good. Is, obviously, it's it's real good fun that way round. Um, it's obviously not... It, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Because it's obviously not that great to be saying things like that when it's the other way round. If you're like, I'm the monster, let's go trounce these players because we know them yeah that's a bit uh, isn't it i mean it did happen the day after as well because i have a character i play when i'm monstering i play axeman mm -hmm. his he carries two axes on his back and axe in his hand his whole personality is axes again saw my brother and father on the battlefield forget the plan of course i wasn't leading in any capacity as a monster so this lone orc just runs across the field gets one hit in and then just gets absolutely oh i mean that's fine well. because you're, you're what yeah. you're doing there is basically making the heroes of the empire feel like heroes of the empire you yeah. know you're just yeah, being like, oh, yeah, Actually, let's, yeah. <laughs> let's do it that that's totally fine yeah what was it like playing um druge as as uh because that's what we were all worried about we're like we're not with navarre which sucks but also the navari are monstering as druge which is probably going to be a bad thing fighters. yeah yeah yeah, which are probably they're probably used to because they like fighting in the trees, and we're like, oh no, they're playing as the Druge. This might go badly. I, I mean, I have a very sort of different way of crowing to how most people do because it's as you say, I want to give the players moments, and so I will take every hit, mm -hmm. probably as much as I should. Yeah, I'll die in a cool way. Um, but the fight, you know, the fight was interesting to say the least. Yeah, yeah, but I will say it's you know, yeah, we... it was <laughs> it it wasn't our best moment. I don't think because there was a lot of people on the field that day. Yeah, yeah, we you know we, I mean? we 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 talk pretty honestly about it. Uh, yeah, on our on, when we covered it on uh, when we we covered it on the podcast. Um, yeah, because we, we were basically our, our thoughts were like even as new players, but we know the Druge 
brief and just speaking with people after we were like the, the druge weren't acting like druge um and no. there was a lot no. and there was obviously the question of is it necessary to venom doubt because basically we know you guys were told i heard no about this like that's a thing like obviously they said to you guys no executions but ve venoming a down player isn't technically an execution but it's obviously but a it, death is. it is but it is it's, it's, it's a death sentence. Back for that. <laughs> yeah i mean if i yeah if i can be brutally honest mm -hmm. i i think the crew got a little out of hand um because i i went down mm -hmm. uh, i wasn't dead but i went down as a as an orc and this guy was dragging me yeah now he wasn't dragging me in the empire way my leg was caught Ooh. in a tree stump Oof. and he was trying to pull me out of it. And I was like, dude, stop. And he's yeah. like, I'm getting you out of here. And I was like, no, 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 add a character. Stop what you're fucking doing. Yeah. I'm about to dislocate my own leg. Yes. And he was like, I don't care. I'm moving you out of here. And I was like, what? stop, man. Yeah. Like the yeah. adrenaline was clearly rushing through his head. Yeah. He was way too excited about having killed three players or whatever the hell he did. Yeah. Um, and I stood up and I was like, I sort of like, got his hand and removed his hand from it which you're not supposed to even be grabbing people no, no. um and I, I i got up in his face and i was like dude when i tell you to stop out of character you bloody stop yeah that could have been bad and he took his spear and smacked me across the face with it oc what, what? oc yeah and um i mean that's fine brush it off get on with it uh-huh but I think that is a very much an attitude that some of the crew had that day where they weren't playing the game. It was they were odd, getting yeah. a bit excited. There, there was know, just a were, feel there, about there it. There was a lot of really um, um, nasty things happening in that fight. Yeah, because you, you got, you yeah. got, you got uh, Robin got, um, yeah, quite basically attacked. Like, not, not uh, yeah, it was just, it wasn't just an accident. Oh, crap, I didn't pull that blow. It was like, you just got hit like it three was, times. It was, in yeah, succession. yeah and twice you... in the face and the hands yeah. without getting pulled. And then after that, yeah, it, it was pr pretty scary, actually. I think it's the first time I've actually yeah, seen it. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I, I've got the, you know, I know what it's like to be smacked in the face. I get it for work. But the thing is, in our leisure time, that's not all right. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I, I, I bring it back to that people get a little too excited at these events well it, it's a, um, it's it is a it's a uh yes yeah, it's, it's a combat situation i know it's fake combat but it's still uh a, yeah. well a confrontational situation like i was actually quite surprised that then the, when we did the new player skirmish at e1 and they were just like right go and i'm like this is quite intimidating you know <laughs> this is like yeah. whoa everyone's running at each other with swords and um it don't go yeah. wrong it's fun it's intimidating in a fun way um, but yeah, like it's difficult to, it's difficult to, to predict people when some people, like you said, some people are in the mm. armed forces, you know, some people are, some people, uh, do martial arts or they do, um, you know, they, they, they do stunt work where they're, where they're doing these types of, uh, theatrical combat and that yeah. they're used to being in yeah. those uh, environments. Some people deal with confrontational environments. And I will say it's those people who I find are very good yeah. at playing the game because they yeah. know they can go like, right, we're, we're in a game, we're cutting it out, we're being yeah. safe. Yeah. Uh, but you do, and we do have some people who aren't able to switch off that part of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, and it's tough, isn't it? Because it's like, you, you've yeah. got, because the, the refs can't have eyes, the refs can't, can't have eyes everywhere, everywhere you know? Um, but I, I don't know, I don't know whether... I don't know whether they've ever considered having like a a card system, um, where they don't it doesn't need to be a whole like timeout. Let's have a discussion. Oh, get off my field! It's basically like a I saw it because a referee like I, I don't know. I would like to have a ref on the podcast actually and, and talk talk all about this. Oh, because um, yeah, my understanding great. of a referee in like sport and the only sports I really watch are like you know boxing and, and mma but i know that a referee is supposed to be just they're just an impartial party they're supposed to be completely impartial and they are there to uh make sure the athletes are safe and they are there to enforce the rules that is it you know so really uh, i'm interested how there's usually quite a lot of like conversing and i wonder if they've ever tried to implement a like a yellow card system red card system it's just like yeah you know that that was unsafe play yellow card you know <laughs> and that, yeah. that would be it and yeah and i mean maybe this is me being a bit sort of arrogant coming from my background but mm -hmm. it's really not that hard to pull a blow yeah yeah um you know it's also realize you, you have 
<laughs> right? I realize you haven't, yeah. sorry. You yeah, haven't realizing you haven't. And sometimes like people can get overexcited once, if it happens once, and people are like, I'm so sorry, you know, out of character. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. that's, the, the, that's the conduct, <laughs> isn't it? And then, but yeah. like, with like myself, when it had happened like, you know, three, four times mm. from the same person, I'm like, no, this isn't like a, oh, whoops, sorry. Like I literally it drew blood. So, you know, like you're like, come on. That's yeah, when, when, when a phone, when a yeah. phone latex weapon draws blood after two hits, because you were like bleeding from your face and your hand. It's like, oh yeah, it was, yeah, oh yeah, that... yeah, my hand. I forgot my hands were bleeding. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> that ain't an unlucky blow. That's just Very scary. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean the 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 the, the ref that we, we we you went and found was great with us and things like that everyone oh, yeah. uh yeah rafe everyone thought we'd died as well because we were like behind enemy lines of our hands up and things like that because like we had to like wait for robin to recover and then uh they, they yeah well i'm glad I, back to the I didn't line. hear about this i'm glad you're okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it just shook you up that's, but that's the thing yeah. is the fact that you know some people like you say some somebody who's like uh got tactical police training could get smacked in the face and go oh yeah i mean i've i've done uh, you know i've done a bit of martial arts and you just like when you're sparring you get hit with something made of foam and your eyes water and you're like oh but if you've never experienced that at all and, it's a smack in the face yeah you're hurt. like oh yeah you go into because you were robin you were in shock that was the thing you were just like i could every i was like it's okay we can go we can go back to camp in hindsight you know. i should have taken the offer of going back to camp yeah because I don't think it was a shock. It was the fact that like after I was sitting in camp after, I remember sitting there in the DeSandra's tent and I remember like everything quite fuzzy and I was like, I think I took a really hard, hard hit to the head today. <laughs> I I disagree. I, I think what happened, I'm glad you stayed out there because mm. what you would have done is you would have formed a negative experience. Whereas if yeah. you carried on, you know, you can go away from that with some positive moments where instead of dwelling on that bad thing that happened. I, I, I yeah. agree with you actually, Ray. I yeah. think um if I had gone back to camp, I think that E1, um, I'd be scared about fighting. And it's my my character yeah. is just just combat. She's a full combat character. So Oh yeah, I remember the Battle for Bronx Toll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun. <laughs> uh, I, we were robbed. We were robbed. You were robbed. You were. Thing is, they I, changed I, the rules. They did. Thing is, we, we spoke to the marchers like later on. Oh yeah, we, we we spoke to them at E four. The, the players. The, yeah, the we spoke to them at E four. And they were like, yeah. no, we were we were just taking the piss. We were totally okay with you using throwing knives. <laughs> they were like, we can't yeah. believe they stopped the throwing knives. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> We just went, oh, cheaters, because that we would take the piss. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently they were like, no, we, we can... of course, it makes complete sense. It's a knife, it's the, a knife um, fight. From what I heard, the guys who were actually in the arena tipped their hats to us and were like, well done, guys. You found a loophole. We're yeah, going to suffer the because that's what they did, like, the, the previous the year event. Before, yeah. They <laughs> were just like, they were like, no, no nobles, no armor, no this, no no cool, no hero calls, no that. It was all fine. Give me give me ten throwing knives and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was you, Ray. It was you and I. We were both kind of looked at each other. We're like, should we just charge it though? We're we're done. We we charge. Why are we not just charging? And then yeah. we were like, we we charge, right? We're going to charge. We're going to charge. And they were like, go. We're like, ah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I I I I loved that 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 duel. That was so <laughs> it was much the fun. most fun. I've had. And I, I drank my for free way. in a marcher's bar at E4 because of that. Because they're like, hey, it's the knife guy. I, yeah. We heard you left on. <laughs> well done. You're in Navarre now? Yeah, we love Navarre. Come on, have a drink. <laughs> we love Navarre. Come on. <laughs> so so t oh. tell us about the... Um, t tell us about starting a a group then because the, the, you've you've gone in and you've started a group. So, uh, so obviously, we like every nation has their own like group and like in dawn if you've been listening to us it's like it's a house right yeah and in the bar it's Game what is it it's striding stridings it? are the traveling ones mm -hmm. steadings are the home based ones so you've got steadings are like your houses ah, so there's two different types right okay and stridings are like your night errands ah okay okay uh because i think every nation has two or like a minimum of two ways of running your group yeah, because you um, could in dawn you have like you have your houses and then you have nightly orders as well. Nightly so, orders, yeah. that's the not night errands, nightly yeah. orders. Yeah. Uh, but a nightly order is essentially what a stride against. Okay. It's okay. a traveling group of adventurers. They never really settle down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what we are. 
Yeah, is, we yeah. were learning the other day a little bit now about Navarre because you, you you travel like the trods, and we were learning that you have to you have to keep moving basically to weaken generate the, yeah weaken the Valorn. So so have you have you been like indoctrinated into this like Valorn hatred yet? Oh, it's it's fully ingrained. It in feels there. like it's strong over there. <laughs> um, yeah, because I mean, I it was it was part of the conversation I had with the Egregore is mm -hmm. I said you know Navarre always seem happy and ready to party, and the Navarre are not like that. Anvil is our Christmas. The rest of the time, they're fighting a really bitter war against the Valorn, and it's going like horribly. Yeah. Like if you've read any of the Navari lore, we've lost like every single part of our society, and we're basically forced to live in the woods yeah. because the Valorn basically burned it down. Yeah, that's from that's what I understood from it. Well, I know when and... we spoke to someone else from Navarre, that yeah, they were saying that it's it's and it's basically like your fault. It's like Navarre's fault that the last empire got uh or the, is the sorry it's, it's their fault that the Valorna are a thing <laughs> yeah it's because it, like, you've got the Valorna just evil navari basically mm. um and just being around you know i'm talking purely in character being around a whole camp of people who are like fuck Valorn, you start going yeah yeah you're right screw them I mean, <laughs> Druge is still drilled in my mind, but it's yeah. up there with Valorn. Well that, that's interesting because obviously you're you're like part of two worlds now which is, yeah. is which is good because then you you'll you'll be good especially if you you have a you have a position within the the game empire then it's it's a lot easier for people like you know the dornish come to you and be like look you know we're doing this because we got to kill the druge and you you're going to be yeah. like well yeah I kind of get that but what I really like is they have this in this game so they've literally so when all the nations come together and go right what what's the empire doing of it's clear what everyone's motives are it's clear that the navari if there's something to, and obviously PD like dangle it in front of you, they're just like, oh, this that you could do this with the Valorn over here, so you're gonna predict that, yeah, that, that's what the Navari are gonna want to do, you know. Yeah. But they do it at the same time as something that we might want to do, <laughs> you know, yeah. to create that tension, and it's great. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's a part of the game I just haven't explored. Is you know all the political stuff, it's so deep, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you yeah. think you might? So actually, I'm I'm interested in this in this uh, making up this striding thing. So, uh, is it does it work like a house or an order in dawn? You just you just rock up and go. Okay, we're 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 going to I'm going to uh, email into PD and be like, I want to start a striding. Here's the law around them, and then you get members. Is that all that's required, or is there an in-game requirement? Uh, for that's them? entirely all it is. Um, because mm -hmm. we had. Um, I, I set up the striding online and then I said, hey, could you put Ravik as the brand of the striding? He runs it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's now an option on the Navarre thing. People can click and join. Nice. Um, and obviously I vet all the members. Uh, I'll get on that issue in a second because we have had a bit of an issue. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's because um, so we have a, a couple of people who... I mean, I won't name who we who they are, but uh -huh. people who are quite popular online who have uh -huh. joined the striding. Yeah, and one of them made the mistake Jetted of <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> one of them made the mistake of mentioning our striding on their TikTok. Oh, okay. And so I logged onto the Greywood striding the other day, and I was like, "Oh my god, we don't have fifty members." What? Oh, <laughs> so okay. I had to email PD and cancel about I think it was like thirty people I had to take out. Because people were just joining through just through the um, through the website, and I was like, what? "No, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're not in the grey woods." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I guess maybe they're like, uh, I guess maybe they're like, oh yeah, I guess I can join this game and join Navarre. I don't know when any of this yeah. is. I suppose if it's a drop down option, they're probably just like, oh, I guess I join this thing. I I can see how the mistake is easy to be made. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because mm -hmm. obviously I don't have mine as a secret group tool. Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I was a bit like, "Whoa!" I mean, yeah. I know we're cool, but we're not that cool. Yeah, the cool, the, cool, the, the cool, the cool kids. So, what what responsibilities? So, being a leader of striding, what responsibilities does that give you in game apart from vetting people to come in and out of the group? Uh, so you sort of get control over. I mean, obviously, you get control over who joins because you know safety and yeah. all that. But in character, your job is to elect um, and delegate tasks. So you got. Uh, a broker who handles all your money a bit like a seneschal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got our thorns who are our warriors 
and there's a few other lists but yeah. my job as the brand is to inspire for one uh get make sure we're at all the meetings we need to be mm -hmm. make sure all my striding are doing what they want to be doing mm -hmm. um so i i'm basically the wise man so yes. if if one of them says hey i want to pursue a career in politics <laughs> it's my job to take them over to the senate introduce them to some senators and go these are the people you need to talk oh, well, to. Oh, well, so that that does that that's that's quite an that's going to impact your game then quite a bit because you're going to, oh, have to know these it's people. Oh, it's been yeah, it's it's been huge. Mm -hmm. I um I have received quite a lot of help from the quartermaster of mm -hmm. the Crimson Reapers. Okay, yeah. Um, so he's been helping me get sort of people where I want them to be. Mm -hmm. But my it, I would consider it like a father role, as in like you're the patriarch of a family. That's, that's nice. the best way to yeah, put it. That's nice. Rather than in dawn where it's like you're the earl you're the commander you're the boss yeah it more you're just the leader of a family yeah who all run around you like everyone's equal yeah, yeah. Uh, and we vote on like, like an elder kind of not an elder, but yeah, yeah that, that, yeah, that yeah, type of feel of, to it yeah um, um i like that yeah like, uh what's the word um uh alderman that's the word all oh, right yeah, yeah 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 okay yeah, yeah. I get what um yeah, and then you've got, if we have a decision we need to make, like, do we join up with this striding? Do we join, like, a coalition? We vote on all of that. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, apart from that, you're pretty much free to do what you want to do. But it is a lot less um, rank-based than Dawn. Mm -hmm. I'll say that for free. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which is probably why there's a... In Dawn, there's... A, I know there's voting in Dawn, but they're, they're, yeah. it feels like there is far... Because every time I've spoken to someone from Navarre or listen to someone talk about their experience in the bar, they do talk a lot about that. They talk a lot about, and this might be similar or not so similar in other nations, but I, I, I find it specifically with people talking about Navarre is they, there's a lot of, right. Do we all agree on this? Right. Okay. Next thing. Do we all, do we all agree on this? And there seems to be a lot of, a and lot that's of that. why we have a standing. Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So the standing is, so is because you have a, I've heard people talk about national standing. We learned about a little yeah. bit about this the other day. So do you have a standing for each, striding and steading then uh unofficially we do yeah because uh we sort of greywoods have made their own traditions so uh whenever you join us so at e4 we had 10 new members join us that we've met in the field friends of friends and you become a friend of the striding mm -hmm. right up right. until the end of the event not and right. then we have our own ceremony that we've made it's not in the empire law but we sort of get everyone to sit in a circle I tell, you know, we, I tell a story about yeah. this old sword and like, it's a, the whole story is a big metaphor. That's really for, cool though. Yeah. Um, I like that. you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. People sort of like coming together and coming from nothing. And now you're part of a family. And then yes. we ask all the new members to stand up one by one. We shake their hand and we sort of welcome them into the group. Nice. And again, it's, it's about making those moments for yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's and really, really cool though. I've also made it a little bit more loose because we have a lot of friends from Dawn mm -hmm. where we can now, again, it's not Empire's thing, it's just our thing of if you are someone noteworthy to the striding, so for example, Sebastian Valakar, who mm -hmm. is played by Jake Moxie, mm -hmm. the guy does the Crimson Circle, he's a friend of the striding, so yeah. he gets to sit at these meetings and he doesn't get any votes or anything like that, but it's that he's a part of his community, Yeah, he's with us and we can rely on him any member of my family if you can't find me go and find mr valakar you know yes. it's that sort of nice yeah yeah and again that, uh, that i wanted makes... you guys to be there but i couldn't find you <laughs> well the thing is like we're i said we're doing dawn stuff yeah i'm doing dawn stuff to me yeah we were yeah. doing basically <laughs> our version of what you just described basically um but it, yeah it's um it's good <laughs> like going back to what i was saying earlier it's good to have those types of connections in other nations but yeah I, what is good about you doing that and me, me kind of knowing that meta as well uh and godric and arnell knowing ravik then there is completely scope for that to be a thing in the future you know because then yeah. Th that um yeah that that relationship will organically come in game i find because yeah, that's the thing there's thousands of people yeah. in the field isn't there but you will find the people that you're supposed to find somehow <laughs> I, and it, you you can just walk into them and if you're not you, if they're not there someone will be standing around being like oh yeah they went that way yeah yeah and um, even, even if you don't find them you end up in a different adventure and your weekend compl takes a completely different turn you know because there was there's been a few people that i've looked for like all weekend 
And then as soon as time out, they're like, right, time out. Oh, great. It's been a great weekend. And they show up on my tent. I'm like, I was looking for you all week. Where have you been? <laughs> they're just like, hey. And I'm like, what? <laughs> where, did you, where did you go? <laughs> I mean, I, I managed to see like Yuri like, as, as Ravik pretty much at time in at E4, I think it was. because mm-hmm. um, Yeah, right. God, yeah, because like, Godric had gone to do something. And I was like, I was in the bar and hang out in the bar for a while. And then like bumped into you pretty much straight away. Yeah. Also, you, if you've not got an actual, like an actual reason to go and speak to a certain character, it's kind of difficult to 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 catch them because, like, say if we're like, oh yeah, you know, I'd like to see you know Ravik at some point during this event, but if my character hasn't got an actual, as in like, oh, I need to go speak to Ravik about this subject, it's probably not going to happen. Because I'll like I'll go into Navarre and I'll be like, oh look, there's Ravik, and you'll be like, oh we're off, we're off to do this thing, and I'm like, all right, cool, see you, Ravik. Yeah. That's kind of what happens unless you have an actual like, all right, I need to speak to this person about well, this. That's that's why I made my character a social butterfly. Yeah, because Ravik has no reason to. I mean, this is his entire arc: is Ravik is a poor sod from a village who had no aspirations in life, mm-hmm. but he's just the gift of the gab. And that's given him power because he just likes talking to people. Yeah. Like uh, my, if you if you did it like a Skyrim drop down side quest, one of the side quests would be go speak to Godric. Why? Why not? He's a because... nice guy. <laughs> yeah, because. <laughs> just because. That's it. But yeah, I mean, you, you, that, that, that's fair enough. But you you do you you very much have to be, you know, because you're a charismatic guy. So it's like that that will transfer over to over to Ravik and not everybody has that ability to just like stir up a load of like oh th- I'm going to speak to some I don't know what I'm going to speak to yeah, them about uh, and then they come like they just create game uh, but, not everyone yeah. can but do that the beauty of the game is it also creates its own um versions of doing that because you've got say me and Robin yeah we you know our characters have been f- like sort of loose friends since E1 mm-hmm. and then we get put on the same team for the Brock's Toll yeah and it's like, oh, buddy, let's do this, you know. So. <laughs> Most of our interactions in character have been in combat in some way or the other. Yeah. Because I think we've ended up, I'm sure at least twice now out on the battlefield. I'm sure at E2 and E3, we bumped into one another at the battlefield. And I think at one of those times was when I, we couldn't find Godric and I was looking for Godric and I saw you and you were like, yeah. I was like, where's Godric? Have you seen him? I'm fine. And I was just uh, <laughs> looking at a sea of faces and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not finding him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Was that, what was that Was that the one where I came out of the Sentinel Gate and you were just like, oh, there you are. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, I'm it fine. was that one. <laughs> It must have been E2. It was E2. It was E2. 100%. Yeah. You were convinced yeah. I was dead because you passed, I thought he was dead. Yeah, you passed another Knight Errant and you just saw the brief colours and you just heard a lot of people say, no, no, he's gone. He's gone. It's, it's too late. <laughs> I realised that wasn't body. you because it was you. I would have just been like, that's so that I'm going to run yeah, out of here. Yeah, I think it was a rumour mill. But yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so ho- hopefully next next year. What, what do you think? Um, what do you think? What, do you think it's going to be another case of like we're just we're going to be doing a load of druge fighting in which case you're probably going to be um, with us again i think now that we've found the valorn heart in navarre mm-hmm. uh, i don't know how that mission's gone but i from the resources i got i certainly seem to be a success yeah i think navarre yeah. is definitely going to be focusing more on their own battles this time because we've had a, we've also we've almost had like a year off yeah um where we've been helping you guys sorry carrying you guys um <laughs> well, you guys you you obviously mean that you're a zenny who's who's home we've just got back for them but that's fine yeah uh, <laughs> ravik doesn't like her as any um, oh no oh oh <laughs> Because he like he's a social guy, so he mm-hmm. goes up to an Urizani while drunk. Oh, just in general, to shake his hand. Okay, no, yeah, no, no tries reason. to shake his hand, and obviously they don't do that. Yeah, they don't do that. No and touchy, Ravik no. got offended. <laughs> well, I made friends with an Urizani. It turns out if you're nice enough, they do. Yeah, yeah. I I have started. Uh, this is probably the proudest thing I've ever done at Empire. I, I I will live on this hill and die by this hill. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember the conspiracy theory that Finland doesn't exist? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Urizen is so small. I've started telling people that Urizen is a conspiracy theory made up by the Druze to bolster Empire votes to certain things. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, from what I understand, they almost weren't. They almost didn't exist <laughs> because no. they don't. They didn't have a home until pretty much until we like got Zenith back. Um, yeah, Zenith was belonged to Irizeni. I see another person who doesn't believe in the conspiracy. Yeah, or believes in the conspiracy. To be to be fair, I've 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 done it the other way around. I didn't I didn't I didn't um, prescribe to the conspiracy, but I, we were talking to uh, a I think it was a, a freeborn. In fact, I think there was a there was a few people of different nations, and someone yeah, had talked about this. This Liga had said, "Oh, oh, they talked about this Liga that, oh yeah, they don't believe the Valorn exist," and they were like, "Ah, oh, how silly is that?" And I was just like, "Well, actually, I've never seen one." So and they're like, "You don't believe them?" I'm like, "No, I'm not saying I don't yeah, believe it's... they exist. I've just never seen one." <laughs> so you should never see. How can you believe something you haven't seen? Exactly. I was like, "Well, I've never fought one, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they don't exist." So, which is quite a funny thing to say to. It gives you a good game to say that to someone who's like sole game is like destroying the Valor and you're just like, oh, I've never seen one. <laughs> so, are they a thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can think of several Navari I know who are just like, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> you have no idea what we've suffered through. It's what? fine. Look, God, um, hopefully Godric will have seen one. Well, I, yeah, because I've, I've, I've come with you folks question, off yeah. to Brokelian, so... I think to answer your question, I think it's going to be a very Valorn focused year just because of the discoveries that's been made over downtime. I, I think so. we're yeah. going to. Yeah. Yeah. And we've also built a library that's mm -hmm. being completed at E2, mm -hmm. which will basically tell us how to kill the Valorn once and for all. So, yeah, from what I've, I've heard from Navari players, apparently, apparently what they obviously want to do is is go and assault a Valorn heart. But I think it's going to take uh, like a couple of years of play. Um, yeah. to actually get to that point because don't get me wrong like, like even though yeah godric currently isn't that worried about uh, valorn because it's just not it's just not his game i love having the valorn as an enemy in the system because they are so i i really do think they're like the white walkers in game of thrones they're like this threat yeah the, these certain amount of people are like no don't worry about the barbarians this is the real threat and they're coming for us and they're undead sort of and they're they're just like marching forward and we have to destroy it so yeah, I do. I would love a whole like, let's go uh, assault this Balorn heart or something as a major conjunction. That would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, I and I know this is never going to happen because it's not how Empire, Empire does things. If the Valorn were to just come through the Sentinel Gate, oh. Yeah, can you imagine? Oh my yeah. god! You know, well, like the, they have be... had like obviously. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, I think there's there's, there's been uh, there's been like uh, several monsters just come through with bits and pieces. You know that they, they, don't, they don't do like a full on assault or anything. I mean, that would be. I mean, it would be a pretty good like if they were going to end the game basically, and yeah. the game had ended with us like the Empire basically losing. Um, and it would be a very good event. Like if they, and they made everyone clear. They're like, oh, by the way, on Sunday is going to be in camp combat in this area you know and then they yeah. then they do something like that and it's like the balloon you know somehow get a hold or whatever this enemy gets a hold of somehow gets the conjunction to come through the gate into anvil that would that would be cool it'd be cool but yeah i don't think for, for, for like the, the, the fact yeah. that non-coms want to stay in anvil and have a good time without yeah the combat, it's, it's... yeah it'd be difficult to do so so what's the uh what's the plans for apart from killing the lawn and that's out of your control i guess with what pd is gonna do and how the downtime has gone but in general without obviously spoiling stuff what's your goals for next year uh, well, we're we're working. So I've signed the entirety of Greywoods up to work under the Crimson Reapers. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Of Le you know the you know the league. Guys. The league, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to be working for them because they have a job that they can't, for political reasons, they can't give to one of their own because sounds they can't be sort of affiliated with it. Sounds very so like the league. Yeah, sounds very. Yeah. So he's outsourced it to us. It's a protection detail. Mm -hmm um he's paying us 20 thrones to do it i think something like that oh okay um which i mean sounds like a lot of money but i've got to divide it between 15 people so <laughs> yeah but then it's, it's um, probably going to if they um, all survive 
you feel so well. <laughs> oh well, it's that, um, that's it's... a very elitist thing to say, Robin. That's that's a elitist. Oh, thing to say. sorry. <laughs> it's um, it's actually within um, within Dawn, uh, not Dawn, uh, within Anvil, because <laughs> they've oh. got a politician who's been targeted. Uh, yeah. I don't think this is spoilers. You know, it's all meta, yeah. yada yada yada, and I don't know how it's going to play out. So, yeah. um, a politician who works for the Reapers has been targeted, and he's not allowed to know that he's being protected. Right. So we have to sort of watch from afar any threats that come towards him. We have to remove before he sees. That is such a good so game, though. That's it's brilliant, isn't it? It's yeah. gonna be like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Have you have you done anything? Um, like, we, we did it briefly, like Robin and I. Like so um yeah they, they were so briefly uh the night protector of winter was worried about agrament who's one of the eternals was pissed off that they didn't have anything to do with the icy crag tournament or whatever um and during the tournament the night protector of winter was just like to me and aaron L, like uh could, could you, do you would you mind i know you're not in the tournament but that's good do you mind like getting girded up and i want you to keep an eye on like these people these people because they thought oh, that Agrima, so much fun. Yeah, they thought that Agrima <laughs> might have had some sort of like connection with another nation. They might have come in and try and fuck up the tournament. Basically, nothing happened, but it was still so fun to like just side up to people and just see be hear, on that mission, hear yeah. what they were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that sort of like like yeah. standing up next and just you know listening in and making that conversation yeah. and then reporting back, being like, "No, they're fine. They're just taking bets." <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's the thing when you when you get suspicious, when you it's have like, that, that yeah. <laughs> When you have that suspicion, everybody seems suspicious all of a sudden. You're just like, what are they? Yeah. They, have, they have a lot of weapons. What? They're not competing. Why do they have so much weapons? Or, you know, who were that? Hang on. What? You've met me, Godric. I <laughs> carry my weapons everywhere. Yeah. You, 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 you do. You're not suspicious. I'll just be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Rav yeah. Ravik. Yeah. But yeah. Aaron L's like that as well. Aaron L like just walks around Amal all the time with like five swords on her. Aaron L and Ravik, uh, sorry, Ar yeah, Aaron L and Ravik are just like um, hedgehogs that want you around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. I, yeah, um, I'm hoping that so so that uh, hopefully the uh, security detail then that sounds like a very just like Amal based uh, thing. So hopefully you won't be like swept away by leagueish mercenaries on the major conjunctions then. Oh no! Well, this is the beautiful thing about the job is the guy who he's like the fifth richest guy in the empire who's hired us. He says, oh, yeah. "If you have to get your hands dirty, get your hands dirty, and I'll just pay the militia." Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's all you needed to say." You know? yeah. So we're going to purposely cause trouble, yeah, just because that's what the Greywoods do. Yeah, but they seem to have. Um, they seem to, and this is just from my my experience and people I've talked to over over just the four events of the year they seem to have a good balance with the pvp in amble because it doesn't happen a yeah. lot it really yeah. doesn't um but it is also very much understood that obviously murder will get you either executed or exiled but as you can get away there are ways of getting away with it yeah <laughs> i mean yeah I, I i robbed um i had to rob an in character ten at what? E2, I think. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, obviously, we got the guy's permission. Like, I, just, I, said, back or, I just, you I just know? had to. They had, <laughs> they had biscuits. I saw the biscuits. I just had to rob them. No, so, yeah. So, um, so, well, we so, set it up as a. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you go through that actually? Because we've never actually spoken yeah. to anyone who's played that part of the game. So, what was it like that? Part like the, the criminal game? side. Yeah, um, like, kind of especially the yeah, thievery in in general. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, it's bloody exciting because um, you obviously tell one of them what yes. you're doing for oc reasons but the rest of them they um i mean i won't disclose who i was robbing because that would give the game away yeah but they yeah. were walking around camp they were having drinks mm -hmm. and i was like i need to find a way to get into their camp find what i need mm -hmm. and get out again yeah before they know anything's wrong so i I did it classic Ravik style. I made friends with them. I started drinking with them. And then I started drinking some more. And then I was like, okay, I'll be right back. I just need to uh, just need to sort my armor out. Go, 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 go. Grab the throne. Grab the money. Grab the money. Grab the money. I'm go. just going to go count yeah. our Robin, money. Robin, I'm going to go count now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> come on, money. Uh, yeah, so like, uh, my, so <laughs> my understanding with the, with the, um, 
like the, the, the thievery because it's not like it isn't a massive part of the game would you agree with that no, uh it's, Rafe? it's, it's not it isn't at all it's there if you want it it's there if you want it and it's very it's so it's so niche that you don't feel like you would ever have to do it right i i feel like we that's did it more for the gameplay of like yeah. my buddy was like hey wouldn't it be cool if you robbed our group and i was like are you as long as you're cool with it yeah, yeah. um and then they still don't know that money's gone yeah because they're so wealthy <laughs> Yeah, well, you get it. Yeah, if you can get away with it as well, and then uh, I think if you're like stealing items, I think I think the the, the so that uh, my understanding for people listening, like I, I'm my understanding is that if you have a obviously you have your tent, which is your personal space as well. Like people like some sometimes the tents are just like are just there for show. Sometimes people will have showy tents and then they'll sleep in their tent. So basically, the the rule is is that if it's if it's a tent's closed, you don't enter. You, you don't know, go that's in. That, that you, you don't know, go you can't, in. You, don't, no. you can't go in. Um, but if a tent is open and obviously you're playing that that type of game, and I think with items, the idea is that you, so people aren't actually having physical things that they own stolen, you take it. So like if you're stealing like a magical weapon, you then take it to God a PD. You take the tag. Yeah, you yeah. take the tag. So yeah. you, you then go, oh yeah. I, and then you tell PD or tell God a PD basically, oh, I've taken this from this player, PD number, whatever um so that so they know what's been taken so at the end of the event you haven't actually taken like their actual expensive sword i i'm not too hot on that like i mean the only thing i'll ever steal is money or in character items i'll never do something where i have to take someone's fizz rep yeah and it's just for me oc because while it's part of the game i would hate it if that got lost yeah and it's um, it's, it's it, yeah especially when it's yeah, it's not overly straightforward. Yeah, like if it, like the rules I just yeah. laid out, sometimes that can go a little bit awry. So you might not, you'll be like, oh, yeah. we like play. If I to... can, if I can sneak a ribbon off a staff, then fine. But yeah. if if I have to take the staff, I've, unless it's a mate of mine who I can just pay. Hey, by by the way, I've got your staff. Yeah. Then I'm not going to do it. Yeah, because yeah. obviously with the ribbon thing, people sometimes go, oh no, because obviously the ribbons are quite valuable. Uh, like in game, they're yeah. they're they're like literally people spend all their resources on them. But it's yeah, it's it's good because you've taken the ribbon, you've not taken their physical weapon that they've probably paid a lot of money for. But then you can also say, oh, by the way, OC, I stole your magical weapon, so you don't have it anymore. And they still have their yeah. weapon. They know yeah. where the ribbon has gone, so they're not like, did it fall off? Did it, where is it? You just like they can role play yeah. out. Oh no, where's my staff? Yeah, you know that type of thing. The big thing, because obviously I've played a lot of criminal stuff. Like I did debt collection as well. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. The big thing about playing a criminal and empire is don't overdo it. Yeah. Like you, you do something for the sake of the story mm -hmm. or the game. But if you're just standing outside, just robbing people and like almost griefing, I think is the best way to do it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's not quite how to play. No. I don't think. It, but it, it's not. It's not. It's not in the spit because it's a. Yeah. It's 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 a extremely cooperative game that. Yeah is faith is faith-based system as well so like you know you have to track your own hit points you have to tr you know you trust in each other to play by the rules you trust in each other yeah. to keep the setting going you're trusting each other to not break character when you're not supposed to if you if you do play like that people just aren't going to react to you in a good way i would assume and yeah you won't actually get a good game of it out of it i imagine like Every time I've done like a debt collection, it's been for a storyline or a yeah. theft of a couple of crowns or a couple of thrones. It was that yeah. sort of, I'm stealing it for a boss of mine yeah. and he's doing it not for the money, but so that they know not to mess with them again, to pay debts on time, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And it's that sort of, it's about the story because at the end of the day, the money is worthless. Yeah. yeah. But the story you get from the money, I mean, for me, money at Empire is just free drinks. Yeah, it pretty much is. Yeah, and yeah. By, <laughs> by, by the way, you do get you you do get. Um, it's amazing how much you do build up because our game is not in the trading game at all. Um, no. We have not, you know, we're, we're not really focused on the money aspect of the game, especially being like knight errants that want to be noble who who are like, oh yeah, you know, we we don't have that much of an interest in uh, dealing with it. It's it's funny how much in game money we have actually accumulated in four events. Hey, the first we, event we are we... poor as anything. <laughs> yeah, we stacked up a lot at E4 because I gave a load of like stuff for the kids to sell because a load of the kids I made, made really close friends with and I was like, I'm just going to give you a load of stuff to sell and I was like, yeah, 
you could probably sell this for like five rings each or something they came back with like a couple of thrones and i'm like how much did you charge people <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah i mean you and can you, just you hike can up the prices the <laughs> like um my friend will yeah. who plays the quartermaster he knows how to hike up anything to make it more expensive yes so there was this marcher's farmer who was selling an actual real life marrow and he was like yeah i'll okay. give you five rings for it and he said will was like no no no, no. i'm gonna bid a crown go over to umbar at umbar star bar tell him i've bid a crown on it and see what he bids. So anyway, he goes over to Umbar, he bids a throne, comes back to the quartermaster, he bids two thrones. So this whole thing over a marrow just becomes a like a dick swinging contest yes. of who can, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, but that's that, that is so cool. I mean, that that because that's obviously things that's 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 what happens in real life. I know there's there's yeah. definitely like sales of things that it's not about the the value of it. It's literally just showing everyone else how much you can pay for something. Yeah, it's yeah. just I want a marrow. I'll pay ten thrones for it. Screw yeah. it, you know. <laughs> yeah, there is thing is as well. What is great about the system, it seems, is that there are players with like stupid amounts of money. But yeah. it's not affecting my game if I have no money. Like I, d like I don't feel like I come to Empire and be like, oh, I can't afford that in the game. Oh, I really want this, but I can't afford it. Like you don't feel that at all. No, and also if you do feel like that, there's always some rich guy who will become almost your patron. Like he's like, oh, I don't need this Forbal sword. Here, have it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, you guys must because you've got a couple of magical items now, haven't you? Yeah, Robin does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, everyone's like, here, yeah, Aronel, take this, keep you safe. And I'm like, what about me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Godric, you were given to Aronel to keep her safe. Well, yeah. I don't know. He's yeah. my magic <laughs> item. Well, that's that's almost frustrating. I can't, I can't, I feel like I'm breaking character. from like, what the, what the? Because that's always so funny. It's the fact that like, you were like doing all these things to be like, oh no, my question needs to be safe. And then it's like comes to to like you know what, like just before we're heading out to battle, and all the kids I made friends with, um, yeah, they have a lot of resources and are quite magical. And they all turned up to do a big like, um. Oh, a big like ritual on me and everything as well to just like top everything up. So I had like extra hit points. Oliver had already or um, Godric had already organized another ritual for me. Also, because and, we were pulling resources yeah. in money, like I think we we made a bit of money, uh, like just selling coffee as well. So people were like, we were things we don't we don't sell it. We literally just have a we have a a tip jar, you know, basically. Yeah, so yeah. yeah we, someone we gathered a bit of money through that. And we we're like, oh, cool. And then Robin goes off and goes, oh, uh, as Aaron L goes, oh, yeah, I've got this magical armor for this throne. I'm like, that's cool. How are we going to split that down the middle? <laughs> it wasn't yeah. a throne. It was somebody who put mana crystals for coffee. Somebody put in a mana crystal so they could have coffee for the full weekend. I'm like, and I was like, God, can I have this mana crystal? He's like, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, I just... it for armor. Yeah, I, I, got, I, I got a magical breastplate. Cool. How are we going to split that? <laughs> well, I wear it one day and then you wear it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is actually probably going to be a lot of my game because I've got nothing else to do apart from I might um so so yeah he's so, so here here's a question as well like so because you like you like took a bit of charge um and I I do know because I think you came to me as Ravik one of the weekends and one of the events I do remember you coming up being like oh I'm uh, leading this skirmish uh, do you want to come on and I couldn't come on it but how did you feel like, were you just like, oh, that's kind of what I want to do is take charge uh, in the military game? Or was it something you were like, I, was it that skirmish I that you had been consider, on and went, consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't consider myself a military player. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I lead the Greywoods on the big, the big battle. Mm -hmm. I, I command them. That's my job. But for the skirmishes, I'm actually electing a skirmish captain. Mm -hmm uh next summit to do all the skirmishes because i want to do more of a broader style like i want to have my toe in everywhere my foot in nowhere yeah that's my sort of game that's cool is you know a central character not a higher up character but just sort of a guy who leads his group yeah like a touchstone from, yeah. from the camp you know which is good if you want to play that role because you kind of have to because if you have people in your group and you've got one person in your group focused on skirmishes they need to come to you and you need to kind of know a bit about the military yeah. game and then if someone who is 
like your quartermaster or whatever comes, you kind of need to know a bit about the trading game to advise yeah, them then, on what to do, you know? And the, um, I think it was, uh, I mean, I know you're both big Game of Thrones fans, uh, but it was something Tywin Lannister said to the new King Tom, and he said, a good king knows what he doesn't know. Yeah. yeah. And that is the sort of, you know, um, I mean, I know battle strategy, um, as long as we're fighting Navari style, which is run in, hit, 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 run out. Yeah. Whereas I need someone who knows more slower strategies. I need someone who can do maths. I need someone who can do the physics stuff. Yes. If I try and do all of that, I'm going to overload myself. Yeah, yeah. But that's, but that's cool is because, I yeah. mean, that, that's what makes a leader, right? That's, that's what, you know, unfortunately in, the, in, the, yeah. in modern capitalism, like middle management completely misses this point and it's like a poisoned thing a lot of the time like being a ma being a ma good leader is is knowing who delegation to yes yeah. delegation yes. knowing <laughs> knowing your team and in this case because we're doing it in a fantasy setting and it's like a family unit but it's the same thing because it's that it's that it's, that's oh, it's, it's, it's nepotism at its finest yeah yeah, yeah. so you're <laughs> like oh yeah I, I i know oh you want someone to do you know talk to about trading this or you want someone who knows stories about the navari you speak to this person, yeah. you know, this but person will get to you to go back to you. Yeah. To go back to your question. That's how I find fun in the game is like pointing people where they need to go so yeah. that they can focus because yeah. Yeah. I like just every aspect of empire. I like yeah. politics. I like the war right down to the, at the end of the day, going to the pub. That's such a beautiful thing. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. there's like, <laughs> unfortunately, like my favorite part of Empire is like uh, drinking after the, the fact, but it's just trying to find the fact. Sometimes I'm like, I I don't have a specified, because cause I've got my like nobility now and it, my focus was always just doing, becoming noble and doing the, the test of metal, which kept us busy. Um, but there's been moments, the reason I asked you that is because there's been like moments in the game where... I've had a little bit of uh, maybe make you maybe call it anxiety, but has definitely hesitation when you're on a battlefield with people and out of character. Cause you can play the character that, Oh, I've been here a hundred times, but you're very conscious of the fact that there are players who have been playing for a long time and they, they do, or they might be reenactors that are in this time. They know how to yeah. organize a battle. You feel very much like, like you said, you're like, Oh, should I step up here? There's been a couple of times where I'm like, Oh, maybe I should take charge here. And after the fact, you're like, should have taken charge. But that's kind of telling me that I'm sort of interested in that type of thing. But it's it's yeah. it's almost very difficult to be like, you've almost got to just go, right, you know what? I'm just going to put myself forward to lead. I think that's probably the way to do it, right? Yeah, and it just, I mean, because the, wor the worst thing that happens is someone will just relieve you. Yeah. If you're like, if you're leading them towards oblivion, people aren't going to follow you. Yeah. You know, like... They'd follow <laughs> <laughs> that's my goal i would I want people to be like i'd follow you into the labyrinth godric yes let's oh it. yeah into the heart of the lord <laughs> hey if, no was, but I, yeah. if i if i got this type of character if we were going to go like that is the type of way i would love to go i wouldn't like to, to go being like oh we we fucked up we got cut off we died i would like to go being like if if, if i had connections with um just hypothetically if we had connections in Navarre and the game steered Dawn and Navarre in that direction and we understood your threat like I would nothing would be a better end for Godric on the battlefield than being like yeah let's just run into this forlorn and just blow it up and just take the heart yeah. down with us that would be how I'd want to go um, yeah yeah <laughs> I, I'm glad you say that because um yeah. one thing I've noticed with LARP is a lot of people are afraid of their characters dying yeah um I, like well, I am attached to them <laughs> yeah you, you get attached to them um yeah. but it's this whole thing of um what would a hero in a fantasy setting do he wouldn't sit there and be like oh i don't know a spring horror sounds a bit dangerous I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll sit this one out like someone said to me don't go on the spring horror skirmish you're gonna definitely die i'm going on the spring let's go let's do this <laughs> i wish we had done that one like we were a bit because that was what e3 or something was it yeah e3 yeah, yeah when yeah. the when the photos came out of that and i was like oh, i wish we had wish we had gone on that one you know because it was yeah. uh it, i think that was a it's like a boss fight yeah it's yeah, brilliant yeah but we, like we had our version of that at, at e4 and it oh, was yeah. terrifying it went horribly it sort of went horribly we, we we got a really good experience from it so that was the that was actually so remember earlier when i told you about oh the eternal agriment is was pissed off 
at us and we had to like do a, a lookout just in case you know he'd sent someone to fuck up the tournament yeah he was really pissed yeah so the the outcome of that was that he'd like uh worked with the druze to summon a uh winter uh herald um which was one of these big monsters so a little bit like this the spring monster we had we fought a winter monster um at night and that was yeah everyone was just like it's on a friday night it's at it, it's in the dark it's against uh the druge and it's a winter eternal uh herald you're fighting this ain't gonna go well <laughs> and, it, and it didn't but it could have gone a lot worse if the people if the people i don't know how we survived that specifically you I and i i don't I do. know how we survived <laughs> i do I do. How did you survive? Did you run? I yeah. I dr I had to grab Aaron L and be like, "Go, go! Just don't, don't turn around. Just run, just run, just run." And thankfully, <laughs> nobody cleaved my leg because I was like, "Thankfully, I've got enough hits. I hadn't been hit." Because basically, we got caught behind enemy lines because we had like a timeout because someone had got out of character injured. We had a timeout, and Aaron L's mission was to face the win the winter creature uh, in single combat. So we had been cut off from our line. And Aaron L just ran at this thing when we was time in, and I, she was completely unaware. But I was that we were so far behind the enemy line, so far behind our line. I just grabbed and was like, "Just run." The just, line just was run. a dot to us. The line was a dot. <laughs> we were... So we just ran back to the central gate, and that was. Well, that. because we thought, I, I, okay, we didn't think. I thought that all the druids around us were not druids. It was pitch black. I thought they were all. Um... You know, Imperials. Imperials, yeah. I just didn't realize they were all Druze, and I didn't realize <laughs> how many Druze there were. So, we, I was like, we've been running for a long time. Yeah, I'm gonna tell They're you right now. Druze. If you think if you if you're worried about getting caught in the dark again, E1's gonna be delightful. <laughs> yeah, Let's well, do it. Unless, uh, so, so that there is a very slim chance that I'm going to do a, a nighttime skirmish on the Friday. Uh, e1 however i might be skirmish i probably will be skirmishing on the on the saturday i imagine uh because yeah like i said I, i'm not entirely sure what my game is 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 going to be looking like but like if, you, if you've got a if you've got your own striding now and especially once the all the build up and the steam starts building up for e1 you're going to be one busy chappy like as soon as timing comes in right i i I, I would consider Greywood at the moment to be a part-time job, just yeah. organizing everything, keeping everything going. Um, mainly the D and D. Like my God, I've had to write a lot of a lot of stuff for D and D. Um, <laughs> That's so cool, though, right? It yeah. is, it, it's it's a it's a contrast to yeah. Do, do do you feel like you have a different, a totally different uh, outlook coming into E one? kind of next year than you did yeah e1 i i've got the gear year. i'm ready i'm excited i know what to expect now yeah. and the other thing as well is i've got a lot of friends who i never see outside of empire who i'm not gonna see for five yeah. months it's gonna be amazing to see them again i hope not you two i hope i see you guys before then yeah because you know yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have to but that, but that's the issue with this game as well if you're not in that group it can because you get you I scatter across the country yeah and it's that's the thing with empire you can really get into the game to the point of like because there are certain people in dawn that i have only spoken to out of character when we're having like hot coffee in the morning and i know their characters you know my character knows their character but i've literally never had an interaction with their character because our games are just so different and as soon as timing comes they have so much stuff to do and then i have mm -hmm. so much stuff to do that you don't yeah. actually interact in character, which is which is sad. It's something you can obviously tweak as well. I mean, you can just be like, you know what? I'm going to take a step down from this role and I'm going to just enjoy the weekend. But yeah, and I mean, I certainly hope we, um, like me and you guys, have more in character um, mm. interactions because, as you said earlier, it is that we're very much OC. We interact all the time, and then yeah. timing happens, and we just we see each other in passing because well, that's just how the yeah. game is. But, I mean, I can't um, really speak for for um for Godric, but I know that Arnell has a big chunk of game to do in Navarre next time, um, yes. especially on like the Friday. So she's um should be around there quite a bit, um, to get all that sorted out. So that'll be quite cool. So yeah. I'm sure. We'll yeah, because that's just it. Even though I kind of mentioned, oh yeah, you you can kind of take a step down. I'd prefer, I prefer like having important game 
as in like yeah. instead of being like oh do you know what let's have our characters just go to the pub and we won't bother with any of our like political stuff or our military stuff i'd prefer our interactions to be like oh crap this thing's happening uh who are we going to turn to oh actually i know someone in navarre let's get them involved and then we're all involved in this like dramatic thing we can have fun role playing you know that yeah. type of thing i think that's i think that's the goal right absolutely and it, i mean i think there's only more of that to come because e1 it's going to be huge i think yeah i, I think, think so yeah. yeah i think so so saying that is there anything you is there anything you want to uh plug to the public do you, i know i know you're already like we've got too many people in the in the striding so i'm assuming you don't want to plug the striding no uh what i would definitely recommend is if there are people who are looking at navarre and want to join a striding um i'm sure you guys are going to link my instagram um yeah so yeah we'll, follow, we'll, uh, we'll link all your so all, yeah. all the brave socials will be will be down below or they'll probably pop like, me a dm on instagram let's yeah. have a chat and we'll find out if you're a good good fit for the greywoods that would be fantastic says we we love new players so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, awesome. This has been great. Thank you very much for coming uh, on, Rafe. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to have you on again. We'll have to have you on like oh, before before you want or something like that. We'll do like a big hype up. Uh, well, yeah, you guys have got to come for uh, seven seven Ravik's birthday party. Oh, that is we that is are, one event. Yeah, that's yeah, what that I was saying. I was like, yeah. we'll see you there. <laughs> that's one event because it looks like obviously we, we won't talk details here. We're we're already we're, we're wrapping up, but yeah, that that's definitely one. I'm like. Yeah, because it looks like it's just like drinking and a little bit of like uh, bit of dueling. Yeah, yeah, a little bit yeehaw. I can't, I can't wait. I can't bring wait. my swords. Can't wait for that. <laughs> can't wait for E one. Uh, can't wait to speak to you again, my friend. Right, we'll say goodbye to the podcast. Okay, right. See you later, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. If you enjoyed this show, make sure that you follow and subscribe, so you know you know when a new episode is posted. Um, you can leave a review you can share it around it would really help us out and you know we appreciate you doing that and remember you can catch us live on twitch.tv forward slash to have underscore to roll that's the number two and, and roll is into role play thank you very much for listening <laughs>